All right, moving on to a different type of stock story and something that we have been following closely here on the show, and that is the topic of congressional stock trading. Past few months, there have been a number of members of Congress making some pretty suspect stock trades, like selling bank stocks just before the banking crisis hit or trading in semiconductor names as the massive chips bill legislation is getting passed. Now, that could all just be amazing timing. But as anyone of any party has to admit, it's bad optics. House Republicans Matt Gates and Brian Fitzpatrick are teaming up with House Democrats Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez and Raja Krishnamoorthy to introduce a new bill that would ban members of Congress from trading and owning individual stocks. Joining us now are two of this bill's sponsors, and that is Congressman Matt Gates and Congressman Raja Krishnamoorthy of Illinois. Uh, great to see you both together. There is hope for America, so we appreciate it. Uh, Congressman Gates, start with you. Uh, how did this, can you give us, how did this come about? Who approached whom, and why is this such a bipartisan issue? Uh, I want to give Raja and Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick a lot of credit for a middle-out approach. They worked to help set up the uh, protocols for this legislation, and I know Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez and I are honored to be co-introducers with them. $788 million of securities were traded by members of Congress last year. About one in every four members of Congress are involved in these disclosed trades. We don't think they should be allowed, and there are particular sectors of the economy that seem to have a lot of interest for members of Congress trading energy, high tech, healthcare, defense, the very industries that we have a great ability to impact. And I think going yeah. forward, we have to also look at these moments like the pandemic and other areas where there was a whole lot of trading. And, you know, and Congressman uh, Kristen Morthy, what they say is, oh, you know what? It was in a blind trust. My financial advisor just happened to have the world's greatest timing and sold everything the day before I signed this bill. I mean, whether or not it is just good timing, would there be any sort of way holes in what you are proposing that would allow members of Congress to own and hold stocks under any condition? Well, I, I think that what you pointed out is even the appearance of people trading, uh, regardless of whether they use insider information or anything, just erodes trust and uh, people, quite frankly, don't believe that they didn't trade based on inside information. With regard to this bill, uh, there are provisions that allow you to um, you know, essentially invest in widely diversified uh, funds, mutual funds and treasuries, uh, but you can't own or trade individual stocks. That's kind of a basic issue. And quite frankly, when I tell my constituents that you are allowed to do that now, uh, they can't believe it. They thought that it was illegal yesterday. And so the fact that it's not um, is anathema to everything they believe. And they think that you should be serving them, not your stock portfolio. So, Congressman Kristen Morley, back to you on that. How would this progress? Can you get it through the House? And what do you think the Senate would do if you did? Well, uh, you know, the interesting thing, uh, and Matt may have alluded to it, is, you know, this particular bill is wildly popular among Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, not so much among my colleagues. Um, and so now we are trying to make a push for the, uh, what's called the Congressional House Administrative Committee, uh, which has jurisdiction here, to basically take it up uh, vote on it or mark it up out of committee and then bring it to the floor for a vote. Yeah, and, and Congressman Gates, we, we look at this and I, I think it's, you know, oftentimes the viewers are disgusted. I mean, I, I hear from them, they're like, wait, what? This person bought and sold this stock a couple days before after this? I mean, how does this, how do we even get to this point this far along where this hasn't been dealt with years ago? It should have been. And frankly, uh, we've had a system in Washington for too long that has been based on just Republican versus Democrat. And that has allowed these systemic institutional challenges to plague the people's house. What I am heartened by is that we've got a lot of the younger members of Congress who seem to be united around this. So it's the millennials and the Zoomers perhaps more interested in advancing this particular mechanism of ethics reform than some of our septuagenarian and octogenarian friends. That doesn't necessarily bode well for consideration in the United States Senate. But if we push our colleagues to hold votes on these matters, the American people can see uh, who wants to make this reform. And I do believe that if we just go down this road 
more you're going to see these flashpoint events drive trading distortions in markets and that really impairs the free market system that every investor and every american should be able to what, count what on. would okay let's say you get the bill passed matt back to you congressman gates what would happen uh, you get it passed and and members of congress would they be allowed to own the stocks they currently own would they be no. forced to divest and i would assume if they're forced to divest they will get a tax break because you can't force people to take a giant tax bill so they would be forced to divest into a uh, into a blind trust, but then that blind trust would be required to dispose of those securities within a period over six months. And so there would be a, a an outpouring of those investments. There's some flexibility in precisely when, but once we get that through the gestation period, then I think that uh, we'll be in a, a far better place in the House. And, and, and if we don't get it done, Congressman Chris DeMorte, if, if this for some reason, to your point, the Senate, a lot of people in there have been in, been in, by the way, the Dow has changed a lot since many of the Senate first got elected to the Senate. I'll just, ITT and some railroads, I think, were in there. Um, that said, you don't get it through, what happens? Any hope for the American public to feel like they've, they've got it more on the level? Um, well, I, I'd like to say yes, but I couldn't say that. I think that we, we have to push. Look, I think that um, seven years ago when Matt and I entered Congress, uh, this wasn't even on the radar screen. Uh, you know, now it's finally coming to the fore, and I think there's momentum behind this. I think that Speaker McCarthy pledged last Congress that if he becomes Speaker, that he's gonna bring this to the floor for a vote. So I think that we're gonna try to hold him to it and, uh, and just keep pushing. That's it, because you both, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure there's some of your members of Congress that, that have, you know, they own b &O Railroad and a couple of hotels on Baltic and Mediterranean. I'll leave it there. Congressman Matt Gates, Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy, we really appreciate your views. Good luck. Thank Keep you. us informed of how it's going. All right, still ahead.